Hello my lovely Miskatians and welcome to another video. So today the basic jive and strive of this video is going to be a vlog and I'm going to be answering one of your questions that actually came up a lot and I asked on Instagram and YouTube if there were any other questions that you had and this is the question that I continually got. And it basically revolves around this idea of starting or the fear of starting a new painting or in the process of painting, you are having this anxiety because mainly perfectionism. However, as I was reading your comments and basically seeing all these responses, I started to notice three common pitfalls that all of us, including myself, have fallen into. And so that is what I wanna discuss in today's video. So let's go ahead and begin. So in high school and really into college, I started to really hear this phrase of carpe diem. And especially in college, a lot of my basically hallmates they would always kind of paint this in their rooms or write it in their notebooks and stuff like that. And when I first saw it, I was like, what does that mean? It was something kind of foreign to me at the time. And they were like, oh, it means seize the day. And I really love the concept of that, that no matter what the day had in store, no matter its ups, its downs, whatever it could be, you have the choice and the opportunity to seize the day and use it and basically soak out of it every opportunity possible. Now, why am I bringing that up currently today? Well, with these three pitfalls, I feel like there's this idea of seizing the day, not allowing basically it to escape from you. And that is carpe diem. So, Let's look at the three pitfalls that I feel like we all fall into. This is not something exclusive to just one person. I feel like everyone can fall into these pitfalls, whether you are an artist or even just in life in general, just doing crafting or studying or whatever. These three things really can have an impact on you. So the very first pitfall that I see all of us falling into is this pitfall of analysis paralysis. My husband actually introduced this to me. So what is analysis paralysis? Well, analysis paralysis basically means you are analyzing something so much that it hinders you from even trying to attempt it. So you're over analyzing it, over being over critical of it. And a lot of times this can happen when you are starting a painting. That's usually when I get it. So I start thinking about, oh, last time I tried to glaze these colors, it just really got screwed up. And last time when I tried to do this technique, I, I tried really, really hard and it just failed and my painting ended up in the trash. And maybe, maybe if I do it this way, this time it'll be okay. But oh no, what if I do this? this way and it gets screwed up and it ends up in the trash and then I'm wasting paper. And it's this over analyzing of these thoughts that eventually you just give up and you don't do anything at all. So <laughs> that is very unproductive and it can happen anytime. So this happened actually to me a couple of weeks ago. I took on, I believe it was March's challenge. Um, and by the way, monthly we are having a watercolor misfit challenge if y'all would like to be included. But during March's challenge, I really wanted to try and paint a person. And for those of you who have been following me, people are really difficult for me to paint. I tend to do a lot better with animals and with plants and basically scenery and general like backgrounds and stuff, but people I've always really struggled with. I'm getting better at drawing them, but painting them is still a real struggle for me. So I started to paint that painting and as I started to paint it, I started to overanalyze and basically I overworked the painting and eventually it ended up in the trash because I got so frustrated with myself. And then it took me 
almost seven days to pick back up a paintbrush and start painting again because I was so stuck inside of my head that that painting failed. And it was just so hard to get out of. So when you are in this analysis paralysis, how do you get out of it? The best way to get out of it is to tackle something that is super easy, that you have already done in the past, that just eases you back into a painting process. That's kind of what I did, and I'll show you some of the things. I did more color mixing, that is just very therapeutic to me when I do color mixing. So I did a whole sheet of color mixing, just playing around with that. But you can also do patterns, you can do glazing. Um, basically getting yourself out of that funk of thought process and getting more into taking a breath and just tackling something super easy. Maybe it's just painting a circle and then putting a stem on top and then a little leaf and calling it a peach or an apple or a pear. Um, tackle something super, super easy. Even if it feels juvenile, that is the best way to get out of that analysis paralysis. <laughs> pitfall that we all fall into is imposter syndrome. And yes, even I fall into this a lot. So a lot of times I will second guess myself. I'm like, I shouldn't be an artist. Why am I pursuing this? I'm not that good at it compared to this person. And a lot of times this particular imposter syndrome or this idea of I'm not good enough comes up when you are critiquing your work basically comparing it with someone else's. And here's the thing about that. That is a very deceiving and very unhealthy mental state to be in. Because first off, your journey, your art journey is very, very different from the next person. Um, so it is very unfair, first off, to compare my art journey to someone else's. Um, it's unfair to myself and it's also unfair to that person. They might struggle with something that I find easy or vice versa. And so it's better to critique yourself against yourself. So comparing is, I feel like, where this really comes into. And a lot of times I fall into imposter syndrome when I'm in the middle of a painting process. It's not really at the beginning, it's more in the middle of a process when things feel like they are falling apart and everything seems to not be going so smoothly. And every, I'm just gonna lay it out there, every painting has an ugly stage, especially when it comes to watercolor. It doesn't matter necessarily how well things are going. It, every painting has an ugly stage. Um, so just be aware first off, and this is something that I really had to learn, that sometimes there are ugly stages of a painting that you need to push through and you'll come out on the other side with beautiful rainbows and just be so ecstatic of how it turned out. And then other times, there are things that you just need to go, okay, I've overworked this paper. I can't push it anymore. I need to chalk it up to this isn't me as a failure. This is me in a learning experience. And I always say this all the time. We are striving for progression or progress, not perfection. When you are looking for perfection, you are always going to be met with this idea of it's never good enough because who out there really in the world is perfect? Who's a perfect artist? Who's a perfect person? Who is perfect at anything, really? Where is this idea of perfect coming from? And so I feel like this imposter syndrome is first off totally founded upon in lies, where you're comparing your journey with someone else, but then also it's this comparison of perfectionism, which I noticed a lot of comments and I follow into this a lot where it's like, oh, it's not perfect because I didn't do this and I didn't do that. And then I have to check myself. Carrie, there is no such thing as perfect. There's only progress. So how do we combat this? Um, the very first thing that you need to do, um, you need to start creating a list of things that you are good at and you have accomplished. 
So I have not only have a journal, but I have a little bucket of all my old artwork that I feel are success, like two or three years ago, successful paintings. So that is one way that I try and combat imposter syndrome is basically, first off, never compare myself with others. That's a very hard thing to do. Um, never ever try and have in my, my vocabulary, this needs to be perfect. That's a lie. And then also keeping a journal and a record and sketchbooks of the progress that I've made over the years. And the last pitfall that I feel like a lot of us fall into is this idea of, I like to call it the big bad troll. So usually when we finish a painting, and I've had this so many times, I will nitpick like crazy my painting and point out everything wrong about it. We talk about trolls online and seeing trolls on social media, as well as just bullies in school and how they use words to really belittle other people. But yet in a lot of respects, we bully ourselves a lot. So let's call it what it is. You are bullying yourself when you are telling yourself, I'm not good enough. I'll never have the amount of talent that you have. Anytime you are putting yourself down, you are becoming a bully to yourself. And that is the worst possible thing you can do because artistic creativity thrives on this feeling of basically I'm confident in myself and I feel good about myself. Yes, art can come out of depressing times and a lot of my really good artwork has come out of very sad times, but it wasn't created in a state where I was I might have been sad about what was going on, but during that time, I wasn't caught in this idea of I'm not good enough or bullying myself. It was more of, I need to express myself on paper in some format, in some way, because I need to get what is inside of me out. And so I feel like a lot of times we forget that your words have a huge impact on how you paint and how you feel about yourself. So if you are belittling yourself while you're trying to do a painting process or when you're finished with a painting process, that is going to affect your future painting and even how you view yourself in the mirror. And I am not like I am preaching to myself right now. I am probably out of the three pitfalls that I've mentioned today, this particular one is the one that I fall into the most. I am constantly bullying myself. And my husband actually was the one who was finally like, Carrie, you need to stop doing that. It's not good for your mental health. You need to stop taking what you are saying negatively about yourself and instead turn it into a positive. So yes, maybe you didn't do that great of a job on mixing your colors and it's slightly off and stuff and you notice it. But at the same time, what did you do that you actually really like and are proud of in this painting? And so I had to take what was a negative and turn it into a positive. So I really hope this video helps you. Um, Going back to Carpe Diem, as you notice with the three pitfalls, you have to do something to get out of that pit. And that's the reason why I really like the phrase Carpe Diem. You need to seize the day. And sometimes seizing the day is just taking a mental kind of state and twisting it on its head. So yeah, those are my thoughts on the three pitfalls. How about in the comments down below, you tell me what, like which of the three pitfalls is the one that you fall into the most? As I said earlier, the one that I fall into the most is bullying myself or being the big bad troll to myself. And then tell how you get out of it. I think that would be very helpful for people to read in the comments below. And especially for me, there are different ways to get out of a negative vibe. And I actually asked that on Instagram and 
there were some really great responses. I'm going to put them on the screen right now that I read and I absolutely loved. So also please in this video, um, add those comments down below and hopefully cheer someone else's day up and share with them that, you know, we all struggle with this, but it's okay. We can work through it together. So stay safe y'all, happy painting, and I will see you next time. Bye.